Good afternoon and welcome to this ESHRA corporate session hosted by Meditex IVF, a world leading fertility software. I'm Andrew Berkeley. I have a background in fertility clinic management, quality management and fertility regulation within the UK specifically. And I've been kindly invited by Michael Schindler, CEO of Crytex, the company behind Meditex IVF to present Unlocking the Secrets to Success, Managing Clinical Pathways Digitally. As is customary for ESHRA, please find my disclosures available on the slide. Uh, I'm a director of IVF Solutions Limited, which is a distributor of Meditex IVF, the fertility software in the UK and Ireland. I'm also a director of Somovo Limited, a UK donor sperm bank, and a director of Apricity Fertility UK Limited, a virtual fertility clinic. Okay, so let's get started. Um, medical documentation in ancient times. I'm sure the importance of medical documentation has not escaped anyone watching this and is not new to you. However, it may surprise you to learn that the first medical documentation seems to date back as far as 3000 BC, originating in Egypt. Apparently intended as a textbook on surgery, it begins with clinical cases of head injuries and works systematically down the body, describing in detail examination, diagnosis, treatment and prognosis in each case. Case documentation today is considered critical for several reasons, including sharing medical knowledge, innovation, breakthroughs and observations with others in the field, protecting the well-being of the patient and of course to minimize the risk of potential harm to the patient and also to protect the medical team from any medical legal cases. In the course of time, patient related documentation changed from a monological text corpus to a collection of structured documents. The medical history has become a patient file or record. So the challenge, the challenge for uh, electronic patient records, today the provision of healthcare has many complexities. It's multifaceted and has many layers. The challenge is bringing all aspects of healthcare together into one place to ensure we retain the focus of documenting all medical information for our patients, but also to try and bring improvements for the patients and our clinic teams. Good documentation and systems now allow patients to be better informed with accurate evidence-based information. We can help empower patients to make informed decisions, providing truly exceptional support and coordination along the way. We should be able to give our patients timely results and advice regarding their next steps, and ultimately improve the outcome for our patients. The outcome for our patients is mainly uh, successful pregnancy. It's not an easy challenge as there are many specialties and departments that interact together to provide care to our patients. So among them will be clinicians, nurses, embryologists, andrologists, counselors, pharmacists, administrators, holistic care providers and biomedical scientists and many, many more, all interacting together to deliver the highest standards of care and treatment to our patients. Therefore, there are multiple sources of information from all these providers. Uh, the patient themselves, of course, provides us with several pieces of information, records of any previous treatment, medical, reproductive and family histories, hormone, serology and genetic results, ultrasound assessments, semen analysis, embryological data, andrology data, and the list goes on. How do we collect all information effectively, timely and centrally to have a full picture of this patient or couple and their fertility journey? This is the challenge. Every patient we see in our fertility clinic has already embarked upon their fertility journey, no matter how long or short, fertility journeys are very complex. Health information in the digital age. When considering digitalization of health information, we must not add another layer of complexity to the mix. As I mentioned, it's complex enough. We must try to simplify and make the process more efficient for the end user. The end user are the care team and of course the patient. We must design and implement solutions that provide a balance between standardization and flexibility. Standardization, essential for consistency of reporting, consistency of interpreting and analyzing the results, 
consist consistency of processes and ensuring the principles of quality management are adopted. Whilst we need to allow flexibility for the clinic, the team and the patient, a one size fits all approach will not work. This is human healthcare after all, and every patient, every situation, every clinic, every team member is different with different requirements. We must build and implement systems that instill confidence, confidence of our patients, confidence of our team members, confidence of the regulators, and also our senior management or board. Information governance and information security must also be the fundamental foundation of any digital solution. So moving to the different uh, acronyms for, for systems, there are many. It can be really confusing, so are you lost? Let's take a short tour uh, as an introduction of the few um, of, of a few acronyms to highlight the key differences between them all. EMR, okay, is the most common acronym for health records. The EMR is Electronic Medical Record. It's a digital version of the traditional paper record, which is usually divided into different sections within the fertility clinic, such as clinical, blood results, consent forms, and, and lab. The EMR replaces the traditional paper medical record. EMRs and the data held within them are usually owned or controlled at least directly by the doctor, the hospital or the clinic. But the patient, of course, has a fundamental right of access to information held about them. So that's EMR. The next is EHR, electronic health record, similar to EMR, uh, but it's a broader concept. It has the ability to exchange medical information with other healthcare providers in other settings. Therefore, it aims to hold the data and documentation for all treatments and investigations of a patient across multiple specialties, not just about fertility. It receives uh, healthcare. It receives data from all healthcare facilities and specialties. The one thing that any consultant will tell you is that the more information they have available about a patient, the more accurately they are able to diagnose a presenting problem. In the UK, the National Health Service, for example, has had several attempts to exchange data from across all specialties to form an electronic record. So far, sadly, without success. Next is PMS, Practice Management System, or commonly known as Patient Administration System as well in some hospitals. Uh, it usually performs basic centralized functionality such as scheduling or time management, <clears throat> excuse me, patient registration and demographics, billing and insurance claim management. They're often separate systems from the EMR and EHR, but can usually be integrated with the EMR or the EHR. And finally, PHR, personal health record. So it's the concept that the record is truly managed by the patient. It is usually a digital app that has peripheral tools that record health data through sensors or algorithms, connected devices or wearables, such as Apple Health app, utilizing data collected by Apple Watch or Fitbit. Um, being digital, the personal health record can truly be taken anywhere by the patient. So that's an introduction about the different acronym, acronyms and the different systems. Um, what we're gonna to move to now is discovering the secrets of using digital technology to help the patient journey. So the next section, we're gonna be looking at different areas of the fertility clinic. Um, the first being patient management. What is the secret to patient care? Well, it sounds simple. The secret to great patient care is to take care of the patient. It also is to give the patient everything they need to make good decisions along the way. How do patients decide on which clinic to go for, to go to for their treatment? There are more aspects than I can cover in this presentation, but those with relevance to this topic include online information, websites, social media rankings or ratings, reviews and forums, uh, comments by other patients, compliance with the requirements of regulators, such as the HFEA in the UK. So firstly, how to improve patient care. The key is well-organized patient management and administration. Patients will feel a bond of trust with their clinic and their team from the outset. They will feel confident that all information they have provided has been documented 
and is available for all staff of the clinic. It makes the patient feel as though they are, um, it's as though each member of the team really knows them very well. A difficulty encountered by some clinics is that the patient does not always see the same doctor or nurse at every visit. This is common. They may meet a new doctor at their next scan, but patients want that doctor to know their history and treatment plan. Sometimes a small personal note about the patient, such as Mr. and Mrs. Smith have a dog called Sam, can really help patients feel truly cared for. So websites. <clears throat> clinic websites truly are the shop window of the clinic, but they are so much more. They are conversion tools, data resources for the clinic, such as how many visits, how long, how the different pages are working, information resources for patients. They can be a gateway to the patient portal for current patients. I believe that they're the most powerful marketing tool for a clinic. Website calls to action can be integrated with a client relationship management system, CRM, which, is, which has a customized inquiry handling process in place for specific clinics increasing the efficiency, effectiveness, and handling potential clinic uh, patient inquiries uh, professionally, whilst retaining the all important personal touch. Websites should be mobile optimized. Uh, we have seen a shift in the types of device used to access clinic websites over the past 10 years. The shift is, de is definitely mobile phones first, tablets next, with laptops and PCs dropping to further down the list. Moving on to online questionnaires. So online questionnaires for patients to complete can simply be in the form of demographics for registration or more complex in the form of asking a patient to pre-populate some medical history questionnaires, collecting uh, medical history, family history, reproductive history from the patient in advance of their first visit. The fields that the patient completes can interface directly with the EMR uh, saving administration time for the doctor, the nurse, uh, and the administrators within the clinic. You can reduce transcription errors. So whatever the patient has put, if she spelt her surname correctly, for example, it populates directly into the EMR. And it gives the reassurance that the patients themselves have provided you with this information, particularly in the case of um, medical history information. Valuable patient feedback can also be received through online questionnaires and analysed digitally, feeding directly into your quality management processes and to help drive the strategy of your company. Patient portal. Um, so the patient portal is a safe and secure method of communicating and sharing information directly with the patients. It should again ideally interface with your EMR to seamlessly give patients access to information such as appointment dates and times. They can see the history, their old appointments and the upcoming appointments. They could even select uh, appointments of a particular type. So they could book in through the online patient portal uh, to have a scan or, or a consultation. Um, consultation letters and treatment reports, you could share those with the patient via the patient portal. Blood results, ultrasound images, even embryo time-lapse videos from Embryoscope or Jerry, et cetera. Portals can allow secure messaging between the clinic team and the patients as well. Moving on to the patient app. The patient app is, true, is, is truly a patient tool installed on their own mobile phone to enable quick and seamless communication between the clinic and the patient and vice versa. Some apps even enable medication times, doses, and other appointments to be notified through, through a, a pop-up notification on the mobile phone directly to the patient's device. Patients can also book appointments for consultations, blood tests, ultrasound scans, reducing administrative time of the nurses and clinic staff, and ultimately improving the efficiency of the clinic. The integration of the app to the EMR results again in direct entry of the data from the patient app into the patient record and vice versa. The introduction of a patient app can also give uh, an advantage to a clinic in a competitive landscape. Two examples of such tools in operation within the UK and Europe at least are Salve and Apricity. Sorry, I skipped a slide by accident. Um, time management. 
So time management is crucial to the safe and efficient operation of a fertility clinic, ensuring we know when patients are attending, for which type of appointment. In Meditex, we have a scheduler module that manages all resources throughout the clinic. A resource can be uh, a machine, such as an ultrasound machine, a room, such as a men's production room or embryo transfer procedure room, or staff members with their own diary, such as doctors, nurse, counselor. The scheduler can be configured simply to cover all aspects of a patient's visit to the clinic. For example, a patient is attending for egg collection procedure at 9 a.m. The first stage of this visit could be 30 minutes in pre-admission and then 30 minutes procedure in the egg collection theater, followed by two hours of recovery in the recovery room. This one egg collection appointment type can be configured to book the slots in the appropriate rooms and the appropriate doctors and nurses with one click. Clinics often ask how they can measure how long patients have been waiting or how long each appointment has lasted. A time management tool such as Meditech Scheduler can be used to mark arrival time and the timings of every stage during the patient's visit. The tool can provide guidance for staff to ensure the right type of appointment are booked within the scope of that particular resource. For example, a particular doctor has a new patient consultation slot on Monday morning, followed by ultrasound scans in the middle of the day and embryo transfers towards the afternoon. In the background of the calendar, you can see which appointment types should be entered uh, in which time slots. Documentation. So it is important for all documents related to a patient to be saved in one central location and visible to staff with the right access permissions. It can be used for document control to ensure the current versions are available to be used. It can use a digital signature of a staff member to approve a document before it is fi fi uh, formally sent to the patient. You can use these documentation management systems to locate documents easier by searching for a specific type of document, such as consents, prescriptions, blood test results, etc., rather than sorting through every sheet of paper in the traditional paper record. Informed consent. Uh, technology has resulted in the development of informed consent platforms on the market. Two such platforms specific to the fertility clinic sector available in the UK are Fertility Consent and Engaged MD. Such platforms provide firstly videos and information explaining the risks uh, and the steps of each procedure to patients before they are asked to sign consent, enabling clinics to fully demonstrate that the risks have been explained to the patient. This evidence can then be held in the EMR, along with the digitally signed consent forms themselves. Information and videos can often be tailored by the clinic to align with the clinic's standard operating procedures and treatment techniques and branding. Um, most consent pl platforms use dual factor authentication to ensure the identity of the patient prior to the patient being allowed to sign the forms. Uh, dual factor authentication is is where we, we use different methods of communicating with a patient. So the first would be to initial, in, initiate the form by email, uh, and then the patient would have to uh, receive a, a code to their mobile phone to be able to, to sign that consent form. EMRs can contain a workflow or checklist to see at a glance whether the mandatory consents have been completed and signed before starting the treatment cycle. So if there are any missing consents, the clinic are fully aware to chase those up. Consents can even be associated with a specific treatment cycle and also have a validity date. Okay, so let's move to the world of the fertility clinician and see which tools uh, can add benefit here. What is the secret to being truly useful? We know doctors don't always like administrative work and documenting all interactions, preferring to see patients, uh, and we know that their time is very precious. So the key is to make this process as easy as possible for the clinicians to enter information directly into the EMR. The system has to be adaptable to the clinic's own workflows to ensure that users are motivated to utilize it to the full. The system needs to become truly integrated to the workflows and pathways so that users just don't feel that there are extra steps 
just simply to enter this information and that it helps them in the, uh, to document all processes for the patient. So what is characteristic of a clinical workflow? So while standard operating protocols are obviously necessary to ensure quality control within a clinic and standardization, it is important that any system also allows flexibility. Doctors from different clinics and even doctors from the same clinic can work very differently. Clinicians need information gathered from a team uh, and from different departments, as mentioned a bit earlier. Doctors rely on being able to see the results of blood tests, for example, as quickly as the result is available and in a user-friendly way. It is crucial to have all results from different departments and team into one central database or software, so a single point of entry and a single point of viewing the results, all integrated into the patient record within the EMR. Interface enabled. Connecting clinical and diagnostic devices to the medical record and feeding data directly uh, and quickly is so important. There are several interface methods, including Open API, which is an application programming interface, which can be configured to allow two different software systems to talk and share information. HL7 or Health Level, Health Level 7 messaging. DICOM to transmit in, uh, ultrasound images and reports from the ultrasound machine to the EMR and many more. Using interfaces in fertility, we are able to receive ultrasound images and reports from baseline and follicle tracking scans, blood test orders. So a doctor wants to order a suite of blood, of blood tests and, and then the results. So once the pathology lab has analyzed the results, uh, the results showing directly back quickly into the EMR. Um, some clinics use internal machines for, for, uh, for, for pathology testing, others external labs we should be able to interface with both. Prescription and medication management. So we need to be able to generate electronic prescriptions based on treatment plans and medication regimes and what has already been dispensed or ordered. Uh, this should make the job of a fertility clinician more efficient, uh, increasing the accuracy of the results and reducing the time for results to filter through to the, to the rest of the fertility team. Cycle management. So there are many different reg medication regimes, as we know, uh, different drugs as well, different treatment types and different protocols in operation in all clinics throughout the world. Clinicians often adapt commonly used or template protocols to individualize and optimize treatment outcome for specific, pa for specific patients. EMRs can also allow for so-called template medication regimes to be selected from for example, IVF antagonist protocol. Clinicians can select which stimulation drug and dose, which trigger the times for each individual dose of medication for each patient. This can be used through the EMR to create a truly personalized cycle plan, which can be given to the patient through the web portal or the patient app. Um, the overall aim is to ensure quality control key performance indicators by bringing some consistency to the clinical protocols, or at least accurate reports of medication regimes and outcomes to allow analysis and adaptation of clinic protocols based on the evidence of success rates uh, against each treatment protocol that has been used. So ultimately, the aim is to optimize the chances of success for the patient and therefore for the clinic, whilst minimizing the risks, including multiple pregnancy. Statistics and reports. So all data entered into an EMR should be queryable. So should be available to be queried within the EMR to allow the clinic to truly analyze their own data as part of quality management focus of continual improvement. A number of ways we do it uh, within EMR systems. The first is, is KPIs or key performance indicators. These are to see how the clinic and different staff are performing for example, we can look at fertilization rates per embryologist, pregnancy rates per doctor at embryo transfer, etc. Meditex itself has a built in KPI module with around 100 standard KPI reports to be run at the touch of a button. Quality management so, we need to be able to review compliance, quality control, 
and look for, for continuous improvement. Are we meeting targets and objectives? And also, are we able to see if something is not right? For example, has there been an effect of a particular change of protocol on success rates or pregnancy rates or implantation rates or of a particular batch of culture media, for example? Patient data should be used by the clinic to participate in research studies to further our knowledge across the sector as a whole. Non-interventional studies allow interaction with pharmaceutical companies subject to patient consent. Uh, and reporting the required data to national fertility registries such as DIR in Germany, HFEA in UK, RETA PMA in, in, in Italy, and FIVNAT in Switzerland. In the UK, for example, the data submission to HFEA is required in real time at different stages during the treatment cycle. In other countries, data can be gathered and reported quarterly or annually. Our system should be able to uh, enable that to happen. So that was clinical, uh, or a few aspects on that. Now we're going to touch onto the embryology laboratory and see what systems are possible. So how to optimize performance and accuracy. In the IVF lab, there are so many variables, equipment and methods that can affect outcomes. We've decided to focus on three main areas, witnessing, witnessing lab procedures, data transfer from lab instruments and equipment, and cryopreservation management. So witnessing, no matter how controlled and tight a clinic's processes are, there's always a small chance of error. In the embryology lab, mix-ups can be catastrophic for patients and staff. In 2002, the HFEA in the UK introduced the requirement for all clinics to carry out double witnessing as part of treatment to ensure traceability of gametes from collection to transfer. The main focus was to reduce the chance of mismatch errors, mixing gametes and embryos from the wrong patient. The use of witnessing systems has also aided the lab to ensure quality control and traceability, know which batches of culture media or consumables, etc., were used for each patient, embryo, egg, and sperm. There are a number of different systems on the market to provide solutions to these problems, ranging from RFID or radio frequency identification, barcode systems, biometric ID checks, such as iris or fingerprint readers, to the more simple label printing or more manual double embryologist witnessing. Electronic witnessing systems can be integrated into the clinic's EMR, increasing efficiency and improving record keeping. So useful data transfer from lab instruments. Technological advancements have given embryologists more reliable and consistent techniques and have improved success rates and increased embryo development visualization but have also resulted in giving our embryologists a headache. Having to enter the same information into multiple systems, such as the EMR, time-lapse systems, CASA systems, ICSI laser systems, witnessing systems, etc. This is the headache. So the solution is interfacing lab instruments and equipment directly with the EMR. It results in increased productivity, improved data quality, and ultimately a happier team. Bringing data from multiple sources into the one central database gives scope for big data analysis and the use of artificial intelligence, for example, to be applied to fertility data from more than one clinic. To analyze large data sets, to look for patterns that can influence patients' outcomes. Last but not least, the lab can create reports containing all data required for the doctors and patients too from this one central source of data. Moving into cryopreservation management. So cryopreservation systems seem simple, but they're very, very complex. There are different types of material stored, egg, sperm, embryos, ovarian tissue, donor sperm, infectious samples, screening samples, quarantine samples. The tasks, the tanks, sorry, can differ in their internal structure. So how many canisters, how many canes, and from one tank to another, this varies. Some can be vapor phase or liquid phase. Older embryos may have been stored using slow freeze and thaw technique, and, and newer 
newer embryos by vitrification. Each patient can consent to different storage periods uh, and that differs from one country to another as well. And often there are billing implications for the clinic. So how to control and visualize all of these variables. We know our old friend Microsoft Excel has been utilized successfully by many, many clinics for years, um, being added to over time and often being referred to as the lab Bible in some clinics. But there are better tools in our view on the market. So storage management and search and find in, within the cryo structure. Uh, inventory, so knowing what is in storage at any one time and where is key. How long can, can we continue to store that material for? These are key problems for fertility lab staff and coupled with a requirement to audit, usually by the regulators, what's in storage. Um, is, and also there are commercial aspects to do with billing. So the safe and accurate labeling of samples and reducing of errors of thawing incorrect samples is also a, a huge benefit of knowing what's in storage and where. Search and find. So how do we find where the samples are? How to easily retrieve them from the tank without exposing other samples to potential thawing risks? And how to find a free slot in the tank when wanting to freeze new samples. Contract and billing and reporting and statistics. Stored material is usually subject to consented storage periods assigned by the patients uh, when they consent, but also the country specific law. In the UK, for example, it is a breach of the HFEA Act if any material is stored beyond the consented storage period, which can therefore affect the clinic's compliance. Separately, stored material generates income for, for the clinic through annual storage fees. How can a clinic know when to invoice a patient for continued storage and know when the consented storage period is coming to an end? The use of cryopreservation management systems built into the EMR can solve both of these issues for the clinic and team. Some systems can generate annual storage bills automatically based on the contract the expiry dates of consent, the price charged by the clinic, etc. The cryopreservation management system uh, is integrated within an EMR, can also be used to generate reporting and statistics for cryopreserved material, such as the number of days a sample has been in storage, the number of straws, ampules or vials in storage containing sperm, eggs, embryos, <clears throat> for example, for each patient, and the survival rates, thaw rates, clinical pregnancy rates for the thawed material. Throughout Europe, there is full traceability of samples that are transported from one clinic to another and to another, uh, another country um, by the introduction of the single European code. The monitoring of the single European code can also be facilitated through a cryopreservation management system. Cryo management for sperm donation samples, frozen egg banks can also be managed through the EMR, including the quarantine requirements, the rescreening requirements, traceability, the number of children born from each donor, matching donors with recipients, and maintaining a full history of the quality of samples per donor. So we're coming to the end of the presentation and hopefully we have shared some secrets of digital solutions which can help manage clinical pathways for you and your clinic. If you would like to explore software and solutions further, please visit Meditex at the Escher exhibition or via several channels searching for Meditex on social media or our website ivf.software. We're here for you during and after Escher, here to answer your questions related to fertility software and digital management. And we hope to see you in person next year. Thank you, Eshra, for giving this opportunity to present. And thank you all for listening and joining us. On behalf of the Meditex team, we hope you enjoy your Eshra Conference 2020.